every moment right here, right now. So I get to welcome our dearest, our most wonderful, wonderful minister. Actually, we call him our Liberace minister, <laughs> Reverend Marky Mark. Aloha. Thank you so much. Uh, I have to acknowledge Rep. Bev because, you know, I realized she called me Liberace and I thought, you know, Liberace actually inspired so many rock stars to come out and be the light and to show their light and sing and do that. And so I thought about it because she's been calling me, you're just a rock star minister. I thought, well, I'm just going to dress like a rock star then. Might as well. Might as well. You know, I don't go to Hilo in this, let's just say that. <laughs> but it, it's really, I am in gratitude to just be here, to speak at this Center for Spiritual Living, because I've been in this movement probably 40 or 50 years, and I still learn things every day from the science of mind. I also study the Course in Miracles because that seems to be something that really helps me in this world of chaos and fear and stuff. It keeps me grounded a little bit, and I like that. So I'm going to just open this with today's lesson in the Course in Miracles because I found it very apropos. So I'd like you to just close your eyes for a moment and go within and just close your eyes and listen to these words because it's the truth of you and me. I walk with God in perfect holiness. You walk with God in perfect holiness. I light the world, I light my mind, and all the minds which God created one with me. You light the world, you light my mind, all the minds which God created one with you. Just think on that for a minute, because it's the truth. If we knew who walked beside us, we would have no fear. Okay. So, the theme this month is living every day in wonder. And it's about the body. How many of you have cursed your body? I have, for sure. Anybody done that? Where you've had a love-hate relationship with it, it didn't look like anybody else's body, and I, well, it's too big here, it's too fat there, it's too, 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 too. That's your ego. So the truth of it is, your body is an amazing mechanism that is run by the infinite intelligence within you. And if you don't believe it, remember as a child when you scraped yourself and just let it be and put some water on it and it just sort of healed itself and you didn't even know how it happened. So that intelligence is available to us at all times in our body, but we must remember the source of the healing. It is within us. We search all over the place for places and things and all this stuff to do, and that's fun. I mean, it's a fun game, but it's really just, it's basically a resource. I like the source. When I get something going on in my body, I'm like, what do you want me to learn from this before you hit me with a two by four? Because that's what happens when you get really sick. You're like, okay, I've learned that when I get really sick, if I get really sick, it's because I'm in stress, number one, and I'm doing too much for the divine plan. So there's nothing like a good old fashioned cold to knock you right on your butt and sit on the, on the couch for a while. Because you have to rest. God's saying, rest. Even I rested on the seventh day, and you just keep going. So you just got to know that the temple that we are in is an amazing mechanism that is going. While you're sitting here, your blood is filtering through your liver. It's taking care of all these things. It's doing this stuff. You don't even think about it. You, you know, you eat food, and the next thing you know, you're digested, and it's all these things. And the body is just a miracle of God. Human beings can't create a miracle. They can't create that even even like a flower. They can't create that either. That's a real indication there's an infinite intelligence. Just look at a, a flower. It'll show you the intelligence. So this month we're, we will explore how to live in everyday wonder through the magnificence and magical creation that is our body. The body you have 
right here, right now, is an expression of God. By loving it, learning about it, and listening to it, we come closer and closer to the divine within ourselves. And so the body is also, in the Course in Miracles, says the mind is the determinant of the body. Every thought you have has an effect in your body. So it, it's really the repository of your thoughts. And so obviously if you're starting to think funky thoughts about things and how you're at, at effect of something outside of you, the body's going to reflect that. It has to. It has to make you right. Now that's good news and it's bad news sometimes too because we think weird thoughts like, I was just talking to Logan, it's like we think I'm not good enough, I'm not, I'm not this, or I'm not that. I'm like, we don't want to focus on what you're not. We want to focus on what you are, a divine emanation of God. You have come into this body because you chose it. Sometimes I wonder, like, what was I thinking? <laughs> what on God's earth was I thinking? And I come back in this duality again with the, well, the freak show. You know? so, but it's entertaining if you take it lightly. You, you don't take it too heavy. Uh, the topic today, it, we begin to explore the concept of living everyday wonder through the magnificence and the divine creation that is our body. Most of us likely have grown up with social messaging that our bodies are not acceptable for one reason or another. Too fat, too thin, too, 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 too. If you think about it, that's what the society says. I've, I have been in, you know, Dallas to a fashion show that was for Versace and all these people. And I dressed like a rock star, of course. I, mean, I had to. But what I noticed was the people were not happy that were doing it. They were walking in the weirdest way I've ever seen a woman walk in my life. One foot in front of the other. I'm surprised they didn't fall on their face. But the, the thing is, culture has told us that we need, when in my day it was twiggy, and I thought, well, I need to look like a boy. I already am a boy. I don't understand this. Because she had no breasts. I was like, that's kind of weird. Don't women have breasts? I think so. Last I looked. So the truth is that our society forms those pictures for us all the time. And it's our job to either accept them or deny them. That's our job. We get the beautiful gift of choice to choose. Do I want to look like Twiggy? No. <laughs> no, I so. So you get to choose. And you get to choose again and choose again and choose again. That's the greatest part about this experience. So you're either too black, too white, too, you know, too tall, too brown. And we have an ideal image of how our body could look or operate. And in feeding the image, we tell our body that what it is right now is wrong. In this moment, it's unacceptable. That's what we tell. People say, oh, I want to lose, I want to lose 100 pounds. And I said, are you willing to accept your body just exactly the way it is right now? You've, you've created it. You actually made it up. No, no. Well, no, I need to do this. No, no you don't. You start to start at the beginning. Start loving your body where it is. You didn't get here by happenstance. You have been feeding it weird stuff that you really, the poor body's like, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't eat that ice cream pint. <laughs> and you're like, oh, this is so good. We're all held captive by our taste buds. If you think about it, we are like, ooh, Hagen does, ooh, you know? Or, or my favorite vi vitamin of all time is the food group I like, it's chocolate. You know, it's like, it's, it's addicting, and they know it, of course, because they put sugar in it. That makes us want more, 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 more. So, ultimately, by learning to love our bodies as they are right now, we open the opportunity to heal these and other wounds or traumas that hide in our physical selves. By opening to feeling how the body feels without judging it, we open to the opportunity to receive insight and wisdom through this miraculous and wonderful thing that we have a mechanism that God gave us to come here. So it's always an opportunity to do that, but do we take the time to do that or are we too busy? I have to say this world is way too busy and could use a break, <laughs> especially the media. They could take a break for a couple hundred years, but that's just my particular thought. <laughs> anyway, so our bodies are divinely created part of the kingdom of God or else we wouldn't have them. 
just like the one mind saw fit to create many different varieties of flowers and trees. So it created many different types of bodies. No one is, is any better than the other, and we would never tell a rose to be a sunflower. You go out there like, oh, you don't look right. You're a, you need to be a sunflower. And yet our society says that. It says that all the time. It's like, you're not God, we're in charge, and you need to do this to be right. I spent way too many years gathering degrees so that I could be worthy of people, you know, understanding what I'm saying. Do you know where that came from? It didn't come from being happy about it. It came from my thought that I wasn't enough and I needed to get something more and I just kept going. The only thing is the ego says seek but do not find. So when you get one degree, then you got to get another degree, and then you got to get another degree. It was wonderful staying in school that long. I avoided working a long time. But the truth of it is, is that we don't need anything, nothing. You were born pre-approved by God. Is that enough? That's enough. And if you start to realize you were pre-approved and God just wants to give you the credit you want, you can do anything. But we are our own worst enemies. How many here have been really critical of themselves? Come on, be honest. And the truth of it is, that is your ego operating, telling you're not enough, you're not this, you're not that, you're not this. What we want to focus on in Science of Mind is, what do you want? What would be your ideal scenario? And I know that Doc treats for that, and I know I do as a practitioner too. I'm willing to hear your sob story, I'm willing to hear why you created drama. I've, I'm, I'm definitely willing to hear them because it's kind of interesting to listen to. And then I have the ultimate question. What would it be like if you didn't have that? Do you know how many people can't tell me? They can't tell me. Byron Katie says, you are your story. Give it up. You don't like your story? Create a new story. If you were watching a TV program that had all this violence and everything and you were disgusted, would you just keep watching it? <laughs> this is life. This is life. So while our bodies have a physical nature, this does not divorce them from the spiritual. Rather, they act as an intermediary with which we navigate the physical realm. But we must remember that all of it is spiritual. Science tells us that if you go down to the smallest, smallest molecule and go inside of that, guess what? We're 99.99% nothing. Is that weird? That one's like quantum science is really whipping things around. Our bodies, listening to what our minds say, can hold experiences of pleasure or of pain. And what goes unaddressed in the mind often shows up in the body. It's not to deny it. You know, if you've got a condition that's happening, you know, love it. People say, no, you got to fight it and put radiation and you got to do all this stuff. And I'm like, stop. The truth is you need to love that area, whatever it is that's in you that feels out of sorts. Love heals. Now, you may get a temporary magic formula that works. But ultimately, if you don't take care of the core beliefs at the very center of your unconscious mind, which is what we're doing this afternoon in the class, we're not here to tell you what love is, to teach you what love is. What we're here today in the play shop is to have you release some of the blocks you've had to love. Why not just be loving to yourself first? Our society says, go out and save the world. Save yourself first. How can you give love if you don't take it in yourself first? Then you be giving, you're giving out of lack every time you give it. So I spent a lot of time loving myself and, and, and accepting myself, which was a lot. And it takes a while. I mean, it took me a lifetime to do it. But I told God, I ain't coming back to this planet no matter how much you barter with me. I ain't doing it. This is my last life, and I'm done. D-U-N. <laughs> so here's from Ernest Holmes, because we need to bring that back to this. <laughs> He says, our body is a part of the kingdom of God, and therefore there is a spiritual pattern at the center of it. That's what I call the infinite intelligence. If you don't like the word God, I get it, because I didn't like the word God. I was agnostic. I thought, that's crazy. They, they, you know, they've got something. But religions have reinvented God from love, a whole concept of lovingness, 
to, you know, this one over here. They're, they're car dealers, you know? They're basically car dealers. Okay, you want a lot of guilt? Over here. We got a lot of guilt. We'll manipulate it. Be sure to tithe because that really releases your guilt. No, it doesn't. It's just a law. Tithing is a great law because as you give, you recognize inside yourself that you must have it. And that then brings forth more. How many of you have been on a farm? Anybody been on a farm? Okay. If you ever had a well where you had to pump it, pump the water up from the bottom, you didn't have the electric, which I didn't have at that time when I was born, um, you have to prime the pump. You have to put water in the top of it. That's a tithe. That's what you're doing. People say, well, I don't have enough money. Well, of course you don't. You're not tithing. You're not putting any water in the pump. You, you expect God to, like, push it out through the top. You still got to do the work of pumping it, but you have to first put the prime pump of water in it, and then it starts flowing in abundance. That's the law of reciprocity and how it works in the currency. Everything is moving, so... It's up to you if you want the pump to work. You can pump that pump all day long with affirmations and all these things, but if you don't put any water in the pump, it ain't coming up. It's sitting there. So uh, that's just an example of how I see tithing. Also, the body, this is Ernest Holmes in Science of Mind, body expresses intelligence. It's apparent intelligence being lent by the consciousness which permeates it. Now that sounds like, what the hell did I say that? I love Ernest Holmes. He made me really challenged to actually read all those things. <laughs> and then I found my favorite one. My absolute favorite is uh, Thomas Trord. He is like a mind, well, I won't say the word, but anyway. It's just a lot of language. You think, good heavens, couldn't he said that a little simpler? <laughs> I mean, I know. I know. All of us that were in ministerial school had to read that at Edinburgh lectures, and we're like, what is he saying? Could he just say it in like one sentence and it could be like five words instead of 400 in a period? <laughs> so when you have a minister here, you have somebody that has been through everything you can imagine. And I told Beverly when I first met her, I said, if you could do anything else and be a minister, you better do it because it just brings up everything you need to look at and you're alive. And then some things you don't want to look at, but ultimately the Course in Miracles teaches us the only thing which is the key to happiness is your forgiving yourself for creating the situation that you create. Now you say, well, how do I do that? It's simple. You say, Holy Spirit, I need, the, I need to let this go. I'm giving it to you. I have no idea what this needs to be. And that just is the interesting thing. The ego wants to always tell you what it knows. But if you say, I don't know, isn't it interesting how you get an answer after that? That's the Holy Spirit coming in going, oh, finally you let that ego go so you can actually tell him what really needs to be said. So I just am really grateful for us being here, this particular center. I have, hmm, that's a lot of feeling. I have a lot of love for this center because I have been moved off the island, sort of, <laughs> I, I'm thankful for my kumu who houses me sometimes when I go, I got to get back to the island because I'm living on the mad land and these people are really like lost in space. <laughs> I have no idea what they're doing, but it just seems like they're just terrorized by everything. If I go up and say hi, they're like, <gasps> you know, I'm like, wow, whatever happened to be friendly? <laughs> well, mass didn't help, did it? <laughs> but ultimately, I love this center because it represents the truth. And you are my ohana. Yes, I have a blood family. I love them. I don't like their behavior sometimes. I'm sure you can relate. But the truth of it is, this is my ohana. And so I keep saying, this is where my heart feels at home, and I can tell the truth. And so I feel the love of people in this room. I also feel the love of people in the audience, because I know that this expands all of this thought has to expand, and what we have to do is love ourselves enough. And if you can't love yourself enough, pick somebody that you really have a big argument with or somebody that you really don't like. They're you. Hard truth. They're you. They're something that you need to forgive. If somebody's in your space that's just driving you nuts, you're activated. Don't act out on them. 
take it to the, the source. Ask the Holy Spirit to please help me to understand what I'm seeing here. And it will transform. It transforms the thing immediately because the Holy Spirit or the higher self of you is awaiting you to say, I don't know. And when you do that, you open the kingdom of heaven with the gates. And you'll get the answer, but be patient because sometimes it takes a little while. So in closing, I just want to say mahalo for having me to come here, and I enjoy coming here, and I will be coming here as long as I'm on this planet. Uh, come jets or no jets, I'll show up. So if I have to water ski here, I will. That's a long water ski. Anyway, thank you so much for being here today for yourselves. I really appreciate it, and I, I, am, I am committed to sharing the light of the Christ consciousness to all people. And I look forward to doing that everywhere. That's what I'm doing. I'm a global heart minister. That's what I am, traveling wherever I need to. One last thing. We were talking about temples. Thank you for that. That was beautifully done. I have always gone to temples, Buddhist, you name it, whatever religion I've gone to the temples because they're demonstrations of people's faith in something they can't see. And so just to let you know, in October I won't be here because I'm going to Angkor Wat in Cambodia. That temple they think is 9,000 years old. That's before JC was here or Buddha. I'm like, who were these people? They, they don't know. They're kind of like the Mayans. They just disappeared. I thought, what did they raise their vibration so much they just didn't need to be here anymore? But I don't know. But I know that the energy is still there. That temple in Angkor Wat is 400 acres big. I can't, and it was hidden until 1935. It was hidden under jungle because it's like Hawaii over there, right? So it just like covered everything up. So I'm going to a temple that I'm letting the Holy Spirit guide me. And I will take you with me in my heart because I will bring back thoughts about those and what I've actually experienced. And I, I, I honor every temple. I even honor the ones where they have a man hanging on a cross. I can't figure that out for my life. I spent lots of time in Europe, and I'm like, aren't we about life and resurrection? That was the message, wasn't it? Why is this man hanging on a cross? That was the hard part. <laughs> he ascended. So I think we all need to really focus on the ascension. What do you want in your life? If you want to release some of the blocks to the presence of love, which is you, really, come to this afternoon and lie down and give your life to the Holy Spirit. Just whatever your intention is. Bring me an intention. We are there to, you don't have to share it if you don't want to. I'll ask people if they want to. But whatever dark secret you think is really, believe me, I was a psychologist. I've heard them all. I haven't heard, I mean, the people come in and say, oh, I did this. And I'm like, oh, you too, huh? <laughs> it's like, so, so, I mean, truthfully, we're humans, and this is just an experience we're having, and ultimately, we will let our bodies go, or not. Maybe we'll be immortals. Who knows? Bev and I, I think we're going to live to at least 100, for sure. <laughs> 120, 120. Okay, that's fine. You can help me out on the last 20. So, come this afternoon if you're interested, I, I, and if something calls to you and says, I want to do that, I appreciate you coming, because you haven't been here before, and you said, I want to do that class, and I said, Come on down, but bring a yoga mat because this is a little hard surface, but bring something comfortable, wear something comfortable. It's not about being uptight. It's about releasing all of the stress or whatever is blocking the presence of love within yourself, and so it is.